Welcome to chapter 12. We've now moved to the long-term liability section of the balance sheet. I will warn you that this is a chapter that, again, students tend to have a little more difficulty with. So you want to make sure that you have those printouts, that you have the handout there. You want to have a calculator. We're going to do a lot of calculations in this chapter. So have all that handy so that you can really engage with the content as we're going through. So we're going to start off just kind of reviewing some transactions for long-term notes payable and mortgages payable. Many of these we'll have done before, but we're just going to review them here in this first objective. So remember, a long-term liability is a liability that does not have to be paid for at least one year. Those are reported in the long-term liability section of the balance sheet. As we talked about at the end of Chapter 11, if you have a long-term liability but portions of it are due within the next 12 months, like, for example, the mortgage on my house, I have to make payments over the next 12 months, then the portion that's due over the next 12 months is classified as a current liability, and the rest of it will be classified as a long-term. So let's look at an example. So we're told on December 31st, we signed a $20,000 note, pay, $20, note payable. Sorry, uh, We're still not doing the monthly payments yet. Again, we'll get to that in a minute. But we're going to start off, we're going to pay it back in four annual payments of $5,000 plus 6% each, 6% um, on each December 31st. So let's just do the entry on the day that we take out the loan. So December 31st of 2024 is the day that we borrow the money. So on that day, we get the $20,000. So we'll debit cash for $20,000 and we'll credit note payable for $20,000. Remember, liabilities have a normal credit balance. So for any type of long-term loan, we'll make what's called an amortization schedule. And amortization is a word that we used to describe intangible assets and how we uh, use those over time. And I mentioned then that intangible asset amortization and long-term liability amortization, not the same thing, even though we use the same word. So anytime you take out a loan from a bank, whether it's for a mortgage or a car payment or something like that, they'll have created an amortization schedule. You can ask to see one. You can also easily create one in Excel, and I would encourage you to do that. That amortization table will tell you how much of your payment is going towards the principal of the loan to pay down the, in this case, $20,000, and how much is going towards interest. So if we look here, we're going to make in this example, four annual payments of 5,000 plus 6% interest. So for the first payment that we're going to make on December 31st of 2025, we're going to pay the $5,000 plus 6% interest. So the 6% interest is calculated down here as the $20,000 balance times 6% times one year. So in this scenario, we would make a payment of $6,200, and that of that $6,200, $5,000 would go towards the principal, $1,200 would go towards interest. And we're going to do that journal entry on the next slide. But I want to then take you to the next entry. So let's look at our note payable T account over here. So I'm going to just draw this over here on the side. So we have our note payable T account that has a credit balance of $20,000. After I make that payment on December 31st of 2025, I will have debited note payable for $5,000. So to reduce it, remember, I'm going to debit the note payable for $5,000. So that would leave the ending balance in note payable then $15,000. So for the year 2026, when I make my payment, my interest is only calculated on the 15,000 that I owe. So 15,000 times 0 0.06 times one year is where we get the $900 of interest. So in that year's payment, the 5,900 is the 5,000 of principal plus the 900 of interest. So when we make that payment, remember we've already said we're going to write a check for $6,200, so we'll have a credit to cash of $6,200. We'll have a debit to the note payable of $5,000, and then we're going to debit interest expense for $1,200. 
for the entry in 2026, it would be the exact same thing, except my interest expense instead of being 1200 would be 900 and my credit to cash would be for 5900 And then we would follow that on the way down to make my four payments, where at the end I will have paid out all $20,000 of principal plus the interest. Now, a mortgage is a special kind of note that is backed by some collateral, some specific property. This means that, for example, if you don't make your mortgage payments, the bank has the authority to come and repossess your house. So it's similar to a long-term note payable, except that it has those specific assets backed as security, where as unsecured debt does not have a specific asset. Your credit card payments, your student loan payments, those aren't backed by specific assets so if you don't make those payments they can't come take your house or your car or something of that nature so here we're told that we purchased a building for $150,000. We paid $49,925 in cash at signing, and the other $100,075 was a mortgage at 6% interest. I don't know why we couldn't have come up with another $75 to make it an even 50 and 100,000, but whatever. So in this example, we're now going to make monthly payments. The monthly payments are $600, and they include part of the principal and part of the interest. So first of all, let's just do the entry on December 31st of 2024 when we buy the building. So if we bought the building, we will debit building for $150,000. We'll credit cash for $49,925, and then we'll credit mortgage payable for the $100,075. So now we have our amortization table for the mortgage. Notice that out of our principal payment, and this is just for the first year, we're going to start making payments of $600. Out of that first year, out of that first payment, $500.38 of that first payment is going towards interest, and the other $99 is going towards the principal. So the way this works is that when you make monthly payments, you pay the interest first, and what's left over will go towards the principal. So to get that 500, what they did is we took the 100,000, 75 times 6% times 1 12th, because this is a monthly payment, and that's how we get the 538. So the $600 payment minus the 538 leaves only $99.62 to go towards the principal. So we calculate our new ending balance and our mortgage payable. So if we've got our mortgage payable T account over here, it originally was credited for 175. Now I've debited it for 99.62. That leaves me with a balance of 99.975.38. Now this amount multiplied by 6% by 1/12 tells me out of my next payment, $499.88 is going to go towards the interest and then a hundred dollars and twelve cents will go towards the principal then we'll recalculate the ending balance and so on and so forth here's what i want to point out after making one year of payments i've made six hundred dollar payments for one year i've paid a total of seventy two hundred dollars Notice that out of that $7,200, only slightly over $1,200 has gone towards principal. The rest of it has gone towards interest. So I made $7,200 of payments, and I only reduced my principal by $1,200. If I were to walk into the bank at the end of one year and say, hey, I'd like to pay off this loan, I only owe $1,200 less than I owed originally because the first almost $6,000 of what I paid went to interest. So here's your PSA of the day. You always pay more than the minimum. Even if you can only pay $5 more, $5 more is better than nothing because by law, everything you pay over the minimum has to go directly to the principal. So even if you just paid $5 more, that $60 that's reducing the principal by, that's not going to interest first. 
I've done the calculations and if we were in class we would pull up Excel and do them together but a $200,000 home at 5% interest I think I calculated it if you paid five extra dollars a month you would cut two years off of a 30-year mortgage that's huge that's a huge amount so you always want to pay more so when we make that first payment on January 31st, we're going to credit cash for $600. We're going to debit the mortgage payable for that $99.62 and we'll debit interest expense for the $538. And then we'll refer back to that table every month when we make our payment and just adjust these amounts as necessary.